Hello and welcome to this episode which will be all about subtleties. I will talk about classical music and using compressors which is a hot topic to say the least so stay tuned if you want to hear my take on it. I see a lot of discussions online where people ask to use compressors with classical music, which compressors to use. Uh, and I see a lot of mixed responses ranging from, yeah, do whatever you want to no, are you crazy? Never ever put compressors on classical music or whatever. Um, in, in my personal opinion, which is, this is all about, um, I'm always skeptical to answers that, that are absolute in either direction, because to me, it all depends on what the situation is, what the genre, even within classical music, what genre it is, and your intended target audience and so on. Uh, to me, this is kind of rooted in my own personal aesthetic as a classical musician, in that I, I take a lot of care in, in tone production. Uh, I've, I've also written a book uh, on it. You can download it from below. It's for free. So just download it. It's uh, part of my research career. Um, but basically, we, we talk about shaping your tone production when playing, in, in my case, the classical guitar. Um, and it often stops there. You, you learn how to create a nice tone on your guitar and then moving on. And if someone else places a, a, a microphone in front of you on a concert or whatever, it's, it's their problem to, to make that sound good. However, uh, to me, I, I, I kind of think of the audience as not necessarily being able to differ between what is your sound and what is the sound engineer sound. So to me, it, the tone production as a musician continues from your music performance all the way out through the speakers, which means that microphone selection, mixing and so on becomes part of your um, of your tone production, at least as the audience perceives it. So um, I, I'm not saying that you should be uh, cranky and, and, and bugger the, the, the poor sound technician, but take responsibility for for the tone throughout the audible chain. That is my uh, my approach and my suggestion in, in that case, which means that um, the tone you want to produce is kind of what sets the premises for using compressors or not with classical music. Um, another topic here is also what, what purpose does this recording have? Is it a purpose just for documenting a concert stage performance? Is it a matter of creating a, a, a very separated product that is not a documentation of concert performance, but it's something on its own? Uh, the, the latter is more case of, of my recording aesthetics. I like to do something that is different from the recording, where I kind of shape the tone as I want, uh, regardless of how it should have sounded uh, live. Of course, the, 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 there is always a balance between credibility and uh, sonic effects. Uh, but for instance, to me, mixing classical music with more of a, what let's say, film scoring approach uh, kind of lets me navigate other kind of areas than 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 I would if it was just using a couple of nice microphones into a multi-take recorder and just EQ and basically being done with it. And and I kind of like that creative space in, in terms of really shaping the material. And so for the final thing that is relevant here, that is kind of social groupings, because 
the way you approach music is necessarily more kind of enticing and and into the mainstream for one social grouping than another which means that if i play music in one certain way i may have gained an audience over here but the audience over here won't like my playing uh, but if i shift my way of playing more leaning more towards that audience then i will maybe lose this audience so that that is uh, another question where where you actually have to decide not just should you or should you not use a compressor but which audience are you talking to and what is the purpose of the recording that is the foundation for my grayish area re response which is neither yes neither no uh, i try to avoid absolute answers but more grayscale answers in terms of it depends if you look at youtube online you see a lot of tutorials on using compressors for pumping for gluing uh, controlling and whatever uh, my kind of approach to compressors in classical music because i use a lot of compressors but not necessarily for compressing i use them very much for coloring um so i've, I've done a small uh, so I've done a wee experiment over here where you can see for instance um uh, the sinusoid on 100 hertz first of all a little disclaimer this is not a scientific experiment this is just to showcase so a, a scientific version would have been designed differently and more cohesively but basically uh, i've sent a sinusoid into compressors with similar settings. Um, of course, they are not identical because they use different technologies, but they are as similar as, uh, as I could get them. So this sine wave here is very smooth, a little bit wiggly over here. Uh, make a mental note of that. As we turn down to, for instance, my uh, first compressor here, which is the IK Multimedia T-Rex, 5VC670 and as you can see the setting here is just a long attack a fast release for one reduction and until the GR hits minus 1 dB um, basically um, this is same setting for all the compressors here and you can see just by adding this little amount of compression it really changes the 100 hertz sinusoid moving down to the next one the uh, analog obsession buster uh, we lose the top end there but we get a few bumps here moving down to the flux solera we see it's much smoother a little bit more wiggly at the top end the t-rex uh, black 76 we see a large increase in the top end. Smooth here, a little bump. The L L no, the L A L A. We see much more going on up here. Uh, and a different character in the Twincom from Plugin Alliance. Um, the Millennia TCL two. And also going down here to the Chanev we see a much smooth kind of even distribution of a lot of stuff going on here. This is, of course, not a scientific process. Uh, it's just to give a glance of that the different compressors add different character. And that character can be interesting to put on your classical music instrument. So I prepared a couple of examples here on a classical guitar where you can just listen to the character that they add. So let's jump into it. Let's start with a dry example from my latest recording.
and let's start with the Chenev that we saw had this even distribution of a lot going on. Um, I've only inserted the compressor uh, and I've made it so it just barely moves uh, with a small ratio and fast release and fully wet. That's basically it. Now what you can hear is very subtle. It may get lost in the YouTube encoding process. However, uh, try to do this in your own door and try to really listen to your instruments. I, I find in this example, it's easiest to hear the difference in the reverb as we compare. Uh, when the needle activates, that is when it compresses, we can hear the compression in the guitar. Uh, if it's too much, it's a matter of taste, I think. In this case, a bit too much, I think, so I will reduce the threshold when we compare. To me, it's just like it's opening up the tone in a sense, opening up the sound quality. Let's move on to a different one, the TR5 VC670, and do the same kind of experiment there. I still maybe think that it's a little bit too much compression on this particular example, but the character it brings to it is to me more like like a soft blanket in, in a sense. It, it's it's to me personally, it sounds more cozy, uh, although the difference is subtle. So another thing I like to do in terms of compressors is just turn the threshold all the way down, just run the signal through. And this is what happens with this one if you do this. Moving on, we go to the Lala, which we saw did a lot on the top end. Same here.
and as you can hear it really opens up the top end. So moving back to the document here we can see from the quick experiment here that it actually does a lot to the top end although this example is not representative for from for, for what we're hearing of course. Back to Cubase we can jump to another one this is one of my personal favorites the TCL2 um, I really like it for film scores and classical sounding music um, I have a little compression here a slower attack fast release to one ratio uh, stereo link in this case um, and in the twin top topology here I have the class A vacuum tube enabled and I have not activated the dynamic processing so now the signal is just going through that's all it does going through and get color Now if you add the dynamic processing here and tweak the threshold so it barely moves, we get a different result. Now what I like about this plugin in addition to the character is its MS configuration. So we can basically say that for instance the middle if we want that kind of warmer we could use the vacuum tube in the middle and we can use discrete JFET on the sides for instance or the other way around. Let's listen to that. Next we have the stock compressor from Cubase. Uh, if we go back to the document here we can see that it also in fact creates some some activity in the top end. If we compare it to the original smooth one uh, still with the same co configurations as the other examples. So playing with this one I find that, that this as with the, the other compressors we use now for color is it adds different amount of character and, and openness to to the image in different ways uh, so in, in that case just adding a compressor yes or no is 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 too kind of narrow of, of, of a question because it depends on on the character you want and what you need it to do for your purpose so for instance if I wouldn't need to tone something down 
uh, I could consider the VC660, for instance. Um, if I want to open something really up, I can use the Lala uh, in terms of this example that I have in front of me right here. Um, or I can use another one of my personal favorites, the last one we will look at, which is the Neold from Plugin Alliance, the Neold V76U73. Um, do the same test here before we wrap up. really subtle but I think it adds a nice character which which I from my aesthetics appreciate very much. So basically that's my take on compressors and classical music. In addition to the normal stuff, gluing together, controlling, uh, very dynamic stuff you can hold back a little bit so it fits the, the format better, uh, but also very much like to use it just to add color. Um, I hope you got from something from this. If you want me to cover similar topics another time or want to have a request for other videos to make, please leave a note in the comments and I'll do the best as I can. Uh, if you like this material, please subscribe, hit the bell button and give it a like. Uh, feel free also to share if you know anyone who may benefit from this. And thank you for watching. See you next time. Cheers.